As I was listening to Sunday school this morning, trying to figure out what God wanted me to talk to you about, the word came. All right. And it came in a question. What do you come to church for? Each and every one of us has to answer that question for ourselves. Mama can't answer. You know, at one time I came to church because Mama brought me. And I didn't have a choice. One time in my life I came to church because somebody asked me and I didn't want to disappoint me. But after I gained a relationship with Jesus, I came to church because I... I wanted to. I wanted to. Yeah. The message is going to start today in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. And as you know, a lot of people say that you don't have to go to church to be saved. And you don't have to go to be saved. You have to go because Jesus Christ told us to go. 10th chapter of Hebrews, starting at the 24th verse, reads, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, <coughs> as the man of some is, but exalting one another. And so much the more, as you see the day approaching. So, I'm not going to ask you to tell me, but consider, why did you come here? Why do you come to church? You know, as I was listening to Sunday school that was touched on, but let me tell you, there is a reason that God told Peter that you're a rock. Because this, I'll build my church. That the very gates of hell will not prevail. Jesus knew that he was going to leave us, that he was going to die. But he said his church would live on. Church is not the building. It's not the wall, not the glass, not the electricity. The church is the people, the members. You and I are the church. And for the church to live on, we must assemble ourselves together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a question. That's a statement. We must assemble yeah. ourselves together. Yeah. Amen. You know, people assemble themselves and people who, are, who call themselves Christian. Now, y'all know how I am. I, I do research. And while I was sitting in there, I did look up a survey. And according to the survey of the number of people, and it didn't say how many people they surveyed. But it said of the number of people they surveyed, 89% said they were Christians. Of that 89%, 49% said they were absolutely committed to Christ. 42% said they attended church service in the last week. 19% said they were Christian, but they were unchurched. They don't attend anybody's church. Excuse me. 19% said they attended Sunday school. 33% said they were unchurched. That means 33% of 89% who said they were Christian don't think they have to go to church. Let me tell you, when you gather yourself together, the Bible says where two or three gathered in his name, he would be in the midst. Mm -hmm. right. So if you don't go and gather, then mm -hmm. he's not in the midst. All right. mm -hmm. The Bible also says that if we gathered ourselves together, then we would be stronger. Mm -hmm. So if I prayed for anything, along with you touching and agreeing, then it would be a promise. It's a promise that we would receive. All right. Come on now. All right. If you just look at this Plainly, just like breathing in air. You don't see it, but you believe it's there. You know, 
I, I'm not a scientist where I can look up the molecules in air and I know that one molecule or two molecules of hydrogen, one of oxygen, you know, we, we can breathe. H2O it causes us to breathe. But somebody told me that way back in elementary school somewhere, and I've been basing my breath, breathing on that all these years, that if I went into some place that did not have oxygen, H2O, that I would die. Well, Jesus said for us not to fail to assemble ourselves together. So if we fail to assemble ourselves, then he would not be in the midst. So how can I believe or call myself a Christian and believe every word of the Bible except that I don't need to gather with you and I? We don't need to be together. The other thing is, you know how people of the world are looking for something? Now... A lot of people, especially young people, find that, that, you know, after spending 32 years working in the court system, uh, a lot of young people find that in games. And then you talk to them, you ask them why they, they gravitated to games, they protect me, they love me. They will spend every moment that they can running to, to be together. Now, people think that just because these people gather together, and like I said, a lot of them are good kids, but when you get together, there's a crowd mentality. If somebody suggests doing something, I don't care what it is. We're going to toilet paper the church. Well, I don't think, well, I think that's a good Well, okay, I'm going to do it too. There's a gang mentality, a group mentality. If something gets started, you get carried away and you get involved in it. If that can break out in a gang in the street, if that can break out in a sorority of a church, y'all you know fraternities are and sororities are, they do the same kind of thing. You, and, and if they were a little younger, you'd think they were a gang. Some crazy stuff goes on. But look, if that can break out in the world, how come it can't break out here? All right. If somebody starts praising, right. somebody starts worshiping, why can't that break out All here? Right. Why can't worship just break Amen. out? Somebody starts singing and somebody else starts taking up and humming. Well, I may not be able to sing, but I can clap my hands. I can clap my toe. Amen. We can worship. Yes. You know, if, if, if the world needs to see church folks. Yes. The world needs to see Christians yes. enjoying themselves one with another, loving one with another, and praising God one with another. Yes. Yes. That, 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 that Christian mentality. It ain't got to be a gang mentality. It got to be a Holy Ghost revival. Right. But it can happen. Yes. You've got to break free of all your uh, all your preconceived notions of what a church folk right. ought to be. Right. Or what a Christian ought to be. You know when I was coming up, I thought a Christian, somebody who was a Christian was somebody old, sitting over in the corner, but never would smile, and, and every once in a while they point your finger at you when you got too loud. Or, or, you know, <laughs> come on, man, y'all know what I'm talking about. Because those were the people who we who were told that they were Christians. You have to look at this thing from a from a, a, a outsider's point of view. Why would I want to come to your church? Why would I want to sit up in there and everybody that 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 worship leader? Is singing. Two or three other folks are singing. Everybody else just sitting there, mm, looking around. Why do people go to church? Some people go because it's tradition. That's right. Some people go to see what's going on. Who's who? Who going on with who? Uh -huh. Other people going on to be saying, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm looking good today." Yeah. I got to go let them folks see me because they yeah. deserve to see me because you know I'm, I'm looking good today. Some people come and, and, and who go figure to praise and worship God. Mm -hmm. But see, in today's society, they are a minority. Mm -hmm. They are a minority. Those who come to learn and to worship, to praise, are a minority because there are other people, large numbers of people who come just to come, mm -hmm. just to be saved, mm -hmm. just to see, or just to cause trouble. All right now. You see, Satan comes to church too. Oh, yeah. If you don't think Satan comes to church, <laughs> you wrong. Mm -hmm. Satan can be sitting right next to you while you over there patting and trying to get your praise on. He already you know, he he whispering something in your ear. You can't get into the service because Satan is back there whispering right. and you trying to hear what he's saying. Did you hear what they said back there? Satan is 
trying to distract you. Yes. Now Satan can be in the form of a of a child, uh -huh. of a sister, a mother of the church, <coughs> even a preacher. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Satan can can be a, a, a fan. Satan can be just anything that distracts you and keeps you from the word of God. Amen. But you need to know, my brothers and my sisters, that God is in the building. Yes. If you are being distracted, pray. Yes. God, remove this because I want your word to. All right. We who call ourselves Christian, mm -hmm. and I put myself in this, we ought to have a strong desire yes. to come and worship. Yes. To come and learn. To come and gather one with another. You ought to be, David said, I was glad when they said it unto me. You ought to be happy. Instead, Hallelujah. instead, we look for things. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's raining today. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good reason not to go. Mm -hmm. You know, on Wednesday night, I, I'm just getting off work, and that's a good reason not to go to Bible study. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on, on Sunday morning, oh, Sunday school is way too early. That's a good reason not to show up. Instead of looking for, for reasons, actually, you don't have to look for a reason to show up. We look for a reason not to show up. And Satan is good. He will provide you a reason not to show up to church. Uh -huh. He will provide you a reason not to bless somebody. Amen. Not to worship God. Well, I can do all that at my house. Well, the word plainly says we were not to forsake assembling ourselves together. Right. Now, when he said assembling yourself together, he ain't talking about you, the TV, and the, and the breakfast plate. That ain't what he's talking about. He's talking about the body, the members of the church. Yeah. And I, 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 I can't say this too much. The church is not the building. All right. When you discuss Trinity, Tabernacle of faith, mm -hmm. you're discussing the members. Mm -hmm. When you discuss the church and what the church is, mm -hmm. the condition of the church, mm -hmm. All right. you're discussing the members. Mm -hmm. The building may be falling down, but the members will be standing strong. All right. And the condition of the church. That's what God is concerned about. Amen. Oh, oh, we, we are concerned about the building. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to worship God mm -hmm. on rainy days. Come on now. If the yeah. roof had holes in it, we'd be a little bit. We want to worship God in comfort. Right. But God is concerned about the building yeah. in here. Yeah. God is concerned about whether you praise him like he wants yeah. to be praised. Whether you lifted up your voice, whether you clapped your hands, whether you worship him with every fiber of your being. Because when you let everything go, when everything is put to the side, it's just you and God. It's just you and your relationship with Jesus Christ. When everything is put to the side, when everything is done, whether it says a rope or meets the rope, it's just you and just God. Hallelujah. It ain't about what you brought with you. What you have in your pocket, what you left out, what you turned off and parked outside, that ain't about it. That ain't it. It's about Jesus. Yeah. So when you ask yourself, why do you come to church? I come for Jesus. I come to praise him. I come to worship him. I come to be part of him. I come to be a part of the body of Christ. Because if I'm part of the body, you know I'm going to make it in. See, I don't have to ask somebody if pastor's going to make it to heaven. Because if I'm a part of Jesus, and you know, if he's living on the inside, I can feel him. <laughs> and, and, and church, he's awesome. He keeps me in the whoop back, and he hides me from the rain. So I don't have to worry about it. Maybe storming outside. The winds and waves are blowing, but I'm peaceful <laughs> on the inside. Because it's just me and Jesus and all this other stuff. Just the, just the trees and the fall. No matter what's going on. Well, no matter what they say on my job. 
<laughs> when I had a job. <laughs> no, no matter what they say about me in the community, no matter what they say next door, it's just about me and my relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Now, when I get my relationship down, when I get my relationship with Jesus where it needs to be, then that will lead me into my relationship with my fellow man. All right. See, I, I can't be expected to love you until I can love Jesus. All right. Because if I love Jesus, then I'll do what he commanded me. Yeah. And if I do what he commanded me, then I'll love my neighbor as myself. All right. See, first I have to love Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if I love Jesus, I'll have to put Pastor Hopkins down. Because yes. it's not about Pastor Hopkins. It's not about Cecil. It's about Jesus. Jesus. My, my God. Jesus. It's about Jesus. Jesus. When I realize that no matter, you know, Satan keep whispering right <laughs> Jesus don't want you. He knows what you did. He knows how you were. He forgave me. See, that ends, that, that ends the debate. Amen. See, a lot of us won't take the next step because we keep saying, keep pointing us back. We, you know, I, I am going, say, uh, look, uh, you know what you did. You know how you were. You know. Yes, I did. And I also know that Jesus forgave me. Yes. And that he loved me so much uh -huh. that he, will, he wants me to be. A part of him. Yes. Yes. Every time. Every time. See all the promises that are in here. I heard. Jesus. I heard a minister say this morning. He said 33 years ago. Actually he said 1933 when he was a young, young man in the faith. Just learning. He said. He read the Bible. He was sick unto death, according to the doctors. And he read the Bible. And the, read, the verse said that if he would go to call the elders of the church, yeah. pray, yeah. anointed with oil, yeah. that he would recover. And he said they weren't doing that in the church back then. They weren't praying. They weren't anointed. So how could he call the elders of the church? That's what Satan kept telling him. How can you call the elders of the church? How? And he said he read on. See, that's that's what stops a lot of us. Mm -hmm. You start reading and you see something and, oh. and you don't understand it and Satan Jesus. whispers to you. My, my God. He whispers. <laughs> Fervent. Yeah. Effectual prayer of the righteous. All right. All right. All right. He said when he kept reading and he read that part, mm. that all it took was a fervent yeah, yeah. infection, mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm righteous. And say so, you know now, you know how you were. Mm -hmm. You know how you know Satan ain't gonna leave you alone. He only left Jesus for a season. Well, right. And you think he just gonna leave you or he gonna keep whispering in your ear? Get thee behind me, see. Yes. Because Christ has forgiven me, then I can say a effectual, fervent prayer. Yes. And I'm righteous because he is righteous. Hallelujah. Not because of me. Right. Not that I earned it, not that I deserved it, but because Jesus loved me. Right. You know that little song that you heard when you were in Sunday school? Yes, Jesus loved me. Yeah. It all stopped right there. And if nothing else, you need to remember that, yes, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me, not only the Bible, because he told me so. He lifted me up when I was down in the muck and the mire, and nobody else wanted me. Nobody else could stand me. Nobody else understood me. Jesus lifted me up. He said he died. And his blood was shed for my sake. Yes. So when Satan starts women, he don't like it. Say, he does. He does. All, right. All that stuff in my past is just that it's in my past. Yeah. That's right. And when I come, when I assemble myself together, 
I don't listen. Y'all may not understand it. Y'all may wish I should shut up. Not saying so loud. But when I praise God, I ain't praising for you. You may not like it, but as I keep telling you, sing louder than I do and you won't hear me. I'm trying to do my part. Do yours. Y'all, could you imagine if, 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 ooh, if praise broke out in here? Glory, Y'all know how loud I am. And if y'all got with me, we all got loud at one time praising God. We, we always praying about how to, to bless somebody, about how to save somebody. You know the biggest example we can make is do our part. That's praise and worship yeah. God. Yeah. If, if, if the doors, if the windows, if the walls could not hold the praise going up to God. If, if, if the spirit, if the fire start coming down yeah. from heaven, yeah. if, if you and I would just let our souls catch on fire yeah. with praise, mm -hmm. could you imagine the, the look from heaven, mm -hmm. the feel that God would have, the sweet savor that he would, that would be lifted up from this place? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my children now, man. Uh -huh. They pray, they loving me now. They praising me now. Could you imagine? Let me let you put, you put it this way. If your child, if, 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 if you, your child didn't know, but you heard them thinking about you, praising you to somebody else, lifting up their voice and telling people about how much you love them and how much they love you, how proud would that make you? How glad would that make you as a father? Well, my heavenly father is waiting on us. He's waiting on us to put all this worldly stuff aside. The, the fact that you can't sing. The fact that you can't keep a tune. The, all he cares about is that you're giving it everything. Yeah. That's your effort. Yeah. Oh, I know that stopped a lot of us. Stopped a lot of y'all. <laughs> when you can't sing, when you can't hold it. But look. I'm gone. If I have to go by myself. You need to discuss among yourselves, with yourself, why did you come to church? Why do you come to church? 